little bit about animal signs so that way you can get better at knowing and looking for different things what could be on your property. Um, so an animal sign is just simply anything left by an animal, um, either whether it's visual or sound or smell. Um, to I don't think, I used to carry my bottle of fox pee in here, but I don't have it anymore. Um, well, because the plastic was getting older and I don't want it cracking in here. Um, <clears throat> so, but, <clears throat> All, and then, you know, there's, uh, there's footprints, there's sounds, there's shells, and I mean, even something like this, um, let's see, all right, here we go. All right, even something like this, if you're looking at that, you go, oh, cool, that's a bone. So that tells you, and once you figure out what bone it is, it's from a deer. Um, but that's not the sign that I'm looking for. So do you see another animal sign on there? <laughs> Two marks. Okay, so now then you have to figure out, well, how big are those chew marks? Um, now, I happen to know they're from an eastern gray squirrel because I left these bones outside and I watched them do it, okay? <laughs> um, so, and I thought, okay, well, that's cool. Um, <clears throat> and then um, this one, uh, let's see. Yeah, all right. So this one isn't an eastern gray squirrel, but there's some along here. I'm not sure 100% what this is, but this is an elk bone, and I found this in around on the outside of Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, <clears throat> so, um, <laughs> did I state that right? We already had that talk, right. Um, <clears throat> so, but um, yeah, see, I even put near Rocky Mountain <laughs> National Park, okay? So, but, um, so those are little clues to tell a lot of different things, you know, in an area. Um, you can also find things like this. All right. Um, there we go. Okay. So, anybody know what those are? Beaver. Okay. So, um... I know it's beaver for a few reasons. One is because the teeth marks, they're, they're huge. And I have actually a beaver in here. Just the skull, not the whole thing. Um, since beavers can be 60 pounds, I don't have them in the bag. <clears throat> All right, so I can show you what the teeth look like. I mean, the teeth are pretty intense, so. <clears throat> and on another time, we'll cover skulls, but um, if you were to just find a skull alone, too, there's a lot you can tell by just looking at that skull. Um, one is the top is flat, so the eyes are up. Um, so if eyes are on the side, it will run and hide. You know, if eyes are in the front, it can hunt. But this one would be kind of hard to tell right away when you're just looking at the skull, but thank goodness you have the teeth. Um, you know that's not a predator unless you consider this wood being preyed on. Um, but <clears throat> so it's, you know, just got the molars and then the incisors. Um, this one, <laughs> now this, uh, this skull was actually given to me, it came from a store called Evolution in New York City. So somebody gave it to me. Um, but, <clears throat> so the eyes are up on top on this one, so that makes sense because they're swimming and they're gonna need to be able to see. Um, and I don't think it's this one that I can, oh yeah, I can show you. Okay, so a beaver's tooth, they keep, the incisors keep growing, and that's why anybody had guinea pigs or hamsters, gerbils, rats, you know they've got to chew. And if they don't chew, you know, they're, it's just going to grow right up their nose. So, um, but this just shows you how much tooth is there. So when they file it down, just more comes up. Um, so this is a beaver. Um, <clears throat> now here... 
In Texas, if you have beavers, you're not looking for a lodge out on a pond or something like you would in the north, you know. Um, beavers here will be in rivers, um, and then they're going to burrow into the bank. So we have a lodge. We have both burrowing into the bank and a lodge. Wow. Where is that? This is in Bradfield Village in Utah, which is a drainage pond. That and, is cool. And when we have a big, um, and I took pictures of it because when we had, you know, no rain for so many years, right. and it was dry, I was able to walk right up to it and look right into it. And it had abandoned it because right, there right. was no water there. That's that's a field trip right there, man. That's pretty cool. That is super cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, so. Beavers are probably one of the coolest um, managers of habitat. Now, unfortunately, it ticks a lot of people off. <clears throat> because they don't want it, them managing it on their property. But um, wherever, you know, you go to like, uh, like Moosehorn uh, National Wildlife Refuge in Maine, there are a lot of beaver things. And I mean, it, they just change the whole landscape. And the amount of birds you get there is just like unbelievable. Um, because, you know, they manage for what they're doing, but a lot of other things move in. So They create really good salmon habitat. Yeah, I mean they're they're great. It's just you know, and I've been in areas where people blow up the dams, you know, with dynamite. Yeah. Right. And they want to get rid of the beaver because they have purposely planted like uh, vegetation around the retention pond for right. safety purposes, like I mean, cattails, <clears throat> which you know less likely kids will fall in over there. The deep parts. Uh, so they like to get rid of the, that beaver. Oh, yeah. Well, it's chopping down the lock trees. It really is. I'm, I'm surprised. Well, they must be crummy trees. They're probably not yeah, native. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you could get lucky enough if you were in a muddy area to see a beaver track. Um, but one of the best clues at night when you go to try and find them, because they're really hard to find, um, is the uh, slap of the tail in the water. Um, oh, yeah. It, it is, it's the best. Um, and it is really loud, especially if you go to some swamp in the middle of the night and you have no idea that they're there. Um, it will really get your attention. So, like, just for the beaver itself, you have footprints, you have... Um, You've got the skull, the teeth marks, and then we can't leave out the most important thing, the scat. Now, you can't really get a good appreciation in this little thing for the scat, but um, it actually, to help you remember, remember chicken nuggets, okay? Because <clears throat> it actually has, look, looks like a little breading on them, and it can be a different color. Um, because different cambium layers of different trees are different colors. So, you know, this one might, you know, there could be one that really does look like chicken nuggets, um, where it's more of a yellowish color. So um, I don't, I, I did not, never collected um, an actual uh, beaver scat, um, but this is rubber. See, I know, you thought I was that cool, right? <laughs> Um, so, or that stupid, right? Yes. Um, well, I mean, I guess Buda, right? But, um, but it's going to follow along um, rivers to get to wherever it needs to go. So, and it's not that common. Um, but I mean, I know that they're in East Texas, but. A lot of the East Texas ones will either get trapped or shot. Um, and then uh, I, I know that in Buffalo, I was at a place and there was this 500 acre, like, it's kind of like a swamp and some other things. And there were some, yeah. So, <clears throat> all right, um, another common critter around here that you might encounter, um, of course, is this, right? 
So, you know, you can find all kinds of things with these. Um, so this is a, a white-tailed deer. But more and more, we're getting other things here. So you have to look for axis deer um, now. And sometimes just up the road, I saw a fallow deer already. Um, and then when we do skulls, you'll be able to see differences between deer and pigs and some other things. But just a little uh, introduction. OK, <clears throat> so here's one that you find, you can find pretty often around here. Just depends where you are. So <clears throat> anybody know what these are? Turkey. You can pick these up. Why can you pick these up? It's a game animal. So um, I was just playing a game with them, but I didn't shoot them. Um, <clears throat> so, and then this, this is actually the beard part. Um, and I just, I guess a hunter must have killed one, and I walked up on some feathers, and boom, there it is. I mean, I was like, no way, I actually got the beard. So, um, so I actually have the beard of this one. Um, so this is the tail feather, um, and then this is the wing feather. So this would be the, the left um, wing. And, you know, they do a display. So pretty soon you should start hearing them gobble. And if you want to know if they're around, you know, a lot of them will roost up in trees, you know, during the night so that coyotes and foxes don't get them. Um, if you want to know if they're there, you, there's something called shock gobbling. So you can either imitate a, a barred owl, you know, howl like a coyote if you can. I can't do that. Or you can, uh, I know something we used to all do if we were out bird watching and we needed to get them for our day um, is we'd all get out of the car and all shut the doors at the same time. And if we were near a roost somewhere, they'd go, you know, and then you'd know, got them, okay. Um, so now there's this, and then sometimes <clears throat> you'll see their tracks. Now this is a foot. Um, <clears throat> so this one is from a male because it's got the spur. Um, if it doesn't have the spur, it's a female. So that's, uh, I think these are, these are eastern turkeys from further north. So they're going to be a little bigger than some of ours. But the footprints are going to be like this. Um, the turkeys that we have here are the Rio Grande subspecies. So there's just slight difference in the tail and the size. And then, um, of course, there's turkey scat. Okay. So... <clears throat> Remember, if it's a bird, a lot of times it's going to have white on it because they only have one opening. So mammals are the ones that have two. So a bird is going to basically poop and pee at the same time. So the white is the urea. So if you see white, it's either going to be from a reptile or a bird. Um, it probably won't be from a mammal unless it was eating kaopectate or something. Um, <laughs> But this, um, so, you know, you have a big turkey and then you have this little scat. Um, so, in anybody that's had chickens or something like that, you know that the size can vary, but that's about what the scat would be like. Um, and then, of course, hang on, let me, we'll do a sound. Um, <clears throat> so, if, if a hen is calling, it'll just kind of be little putt calls. So you might hear that, and if you want uh, to get a Tom to call or something, or maybe even to get him to come in and take a picture of him, um, then you can, you can do that kind of thing. <clears throat> okay, um, something that I think that there's more sightings of now that there used to never be. Um, so... I think East Texas got a couple sightings not too long ago, and of course in Big Bend you can now find these, and it's um, black bear. Um, so <clears throat> I'm going to show you some things of black bear. So here is, um, see, and it, you know, this is a black blob. Now, 
I've seen a lot of black bear up north, and I've seen lots of scat. I used to take my kids when they were little, and we'd go to bear area, known bear areas, and I'd take them on bear trails, and they thought it was great. They didn't realize it was dangerous, but you know, it was fun. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but so this is a, a front foot of one. Um, and you know, black bears, they're really kind of babies. They're not any, you know, big scare. Because I mean, look how cute that is, you know? Um, I mean, that's cute. <clears throat> um, here, here is my, this is at, uh, I think in Yellowstone. Um, that's my daughter's hand when she was like three, and that's the bear claw marks in the tree. Um, so, you know, we were doing some tracking. Um, <clears throat> and then here's the back foot. And see how I made him step in that, right? See? Um, but, <clears throat> but, yeah, I just poured plaster in there, and then I have these feet. So maybe we'll do tracks sometime. But... Um, so black bear, um, they're not really that scary or anything, but um, they do have little latrine sites. So they will have a place where they deposit their scat a lot. Um, and it might be an area like the areas I saw up north were like half the size of this room. And it just had, you know, and after a little while, because they're 75% plant material, uh, black bears. and so. You know, it all turned kind of gray after a little while, and there'd be spots all over the place. And then you see a fresh one, and you're like, yes, that just happened. That's exciting. And then, you know, my kids and I would try and find them, you know. But they try and avoid you. But um, so <clears throat> bear, um, so if you're in East Texas, maybe you get lucky. If you're in Big Bend and you hike, up along Boot Spring, you're and in the evening, you're almost, I've heard, guaranteed to get them now. So um, that's kind of exciting. Um, I talked to a hiker when I was on my way up there a couple years ago, and uh, he said, uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting that <laughs> at night when he was out doing something. I said, hey, that's cool, man. Um, <clears throat> OK. Now, I'm <clears throat> going to do some uh, sounds. But I want to show you um, something you're probably not going to find here, but I want to show you the picture anyway because it, it's really cool. Um, for one, we're not going to see this because we don't really get snow, do we? <laughs> um, but <clears throat> that right there um, is kind of cool because it tells a story. Um, so it's obviously an owl or a hawk. You would have to see, you know, measure the feathers, look at them, and know what time of day it hit or whatever. Um, but <clears throat> so if it was to fly down and just grab something and take off with it, probably wouldn't have bashed itself in the snow like that. So most likely this guy missed um, and, and didn't get it. Um, but, and if you see the tracks continue, you know, you know he didn't get it. Um, and the same with like this one too. Some of these I, I did find and then I took pictures and tried to blow them up, but um, all right. And this is one that maybe you could find, maybe on Padre Island or something. Turtle. turtle. Or somebody driving, yeah, but you can see the turtle, kind of gives it away there. You can't look. Um, <coughs> but a turtle. All right. Now, the thing I like the most is I love, and we'll try and do something um, if I have it all together sometime, um, are sounds. Because um, for me, you know, I'm busy, I'm doing things, and hearing something, that is the world to me. Like, I would have never had those Purple Martins if I didn't know what they sounded like while I was working during the day. Um, so here's some different... Anybody know what that is? Squirrel. squirrel. It's a squirrel. Yeah, I know. I probably wouldn't attract one here, but you know. Um, but yeah, this is a squirrel. I always go after hunting season to all the stores to see if they have any cool sound things to add to my stuff here. Um, <clears throat> okay. Wait. 
Mallard. Um, let's say. <coughs> Inhale. Exhale. <coughs> that's one that swallowed a worm. Uh, that's a Canada goose. You can tell I didn't do that for a long time. Um, now, I don't know if any of you have been out and you actually heard deer do this, but um, they, they can. Have you heard fawns ever call? Um, so they'll, they'll make, like one time I had to rescue a fawn. It was sitting in the middle of the road. Well, I couldn't have that, so I pulled over and I picked it up. I'm just going to warn you, be ready to pee in your pants because they have the highest blood-curdling scream you've ever heard in your life. I, I thought the thing was falling apart in my arms or something, but, it, um, but they make a really high pitch. So this is made so that you can, uh, that's like a fawn, and then maybe a doe would be here. And then, oh no, it's the other way around. Okay, so here's, here's the fawn. And then doe, and then buck. You will have a, more of a grunt. So, <clears throat> little fun sounds. And how many of you heard the gray foxes bark? They do that little, <coughs> do that, you know. That one I don't have one of them for, but I call, I call like them to just freak them out, you know. <coughs> um, Okay, so um, an animal we used to have in Texas that used to be all across North America um, that isn't around anymore, unless you go to the Guadalupe Mountains, um, is this one, um, the elk. Um, <coughs> and then, of course, you know, a good one like that. And then this is, um, this is actually hair that I recovered um, from near Rocky Mountain National Park. <clears throat> um, but, okay, so on the back of them right here, um, they have a lot of extra hair because they're in cold areas. So a lot of these mammals will have um, really b solid, hollow guard hairs. So, and it, it acts as extra insulation. And the same thing is true of bison. Um, if you ever go to an area with them, um, they'll actually rub against trees at the end of winter, beginning of spring, to get all that hair off of them because it's getting hot. Um, so, huh? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and then there's a, yeah, a whole lot of different animals that do that. Deer, I haven't really seen them do that. They just lose their hair, and pretty soon you're going to start seeing the colors are going to start to change again. Because right now, because you know, there isn't as much greenery out there. They tend to be a little duller, and pretty soon they're going to get their little orangey colors back. Um, and then, of course, Last elk. Last yep. <laughs> See, he, Christy told you. Okay, last bit of poop. Um, okay, so, <clears throat> so their poop, okay, is, or their scat um, is like this. And it's more um, cylindrical, um, you know, where the white tails are more like little footballs. Um, but you'll notice that changes, and we'll dedicate a whole class to just scat. But I just want to end with this. Um, so this is the bugling of an elk, okay? So if you're in the area of an elk, You'll hear that.